fun one to see. Yeah. Um, Fox is cool in this game, but Fox sometimes has to work a lot harder than you think he does. And I, I feel like not necessarily in the measure of damage, but when you compare someone to Wolf in the damage output department, it, it's kind of easy to see any character look lacking. Yeah, and certainly Fox also has kind of an issue with Fox's Nair is definitely uh, his premier neutral tool, but it's unsafe on hit into like 30. And especially Wolf is kind of counter hit Jesus. Uh, you'll kind of see that Wolf gets a lot of mileage uh, off of how Fox is able to uh, put on damage at low percents. It kind of feels similar to like a lot of Sheik matchups in Melee, where the Sheik is able to, uh, where the Sheik gets crouch canceled for early percent and gets hit quite a bit. Uh, these Nairs are, are very unsafe at low percent. And it just sounds like SBT hasn't been able to land so far. Yeah, no, that's the tragedy of uh, Fox against majority of characters, and even the tragedy of all players at that on this input. <laughs> an ambitious ledge stall by SBT gonna lead to an SD into a taunt, which I like. You really gotta shake it off if that happens, particularly if it happens on stream. Oh, you know the fact that these two uh, knuckleheads have to fight each other on stream in brackets. It just makes this all the sweeter of nonsense, but a very good wow, illusion really, is up there. Yeah, amazing Fox illusion in the up air, which is such a cool combo. I love that that's a thing in this game. <laughs> it's funny, I was actually just talking to SBT earlier today before uh, brackets started about like how a lot of people don't expect Fox illusion and a lot of people don't like... <laughs> they forget that it leads into so much potential for... Uh, for Fox. Now, I'm unfamiliar with SB SBT as a player, but it really looks like, out of disadvantage, SBT can be a little bit of a master sometimes. Definitely likes to come down with Nair, uh, and it seems like Bo, maybe as a factor of being so familiar with SBT's play style as being part of the, the Staten Island community, I hope they don't watch this bot. Oh, they're definitely going to meme, God the, meme the hell out of this. Don't worry, you're, uh, you're chilling. But and it definitely actually, feels like a... I'm glad you bring it up because Another aspect that I was talking about with SBT, and this was more in favor of uh, the context of Game & Watch, but his style as a whole can work for this too, where you play a group of people so often, they develop such a distinct counterplay to your style, but also your character, they look at you and they have a very clear game plan. So, yeah. at that point, you have to start building the layers there. You have to build into that, I know that you know, that I know that you know, like, the Yomi levels just grow Strange, on their own. Strange, isn't it? It really, it really <laughs> Yeah, no, it really is. <laughs> Yeah, so that's why you start seeing these, like, hood rat options of buttons being pressed all yeah, over I mean, the place. Yeah, that was like an air dodge to read up tilt, which is just fucking crazy. <laughs> Who the fuck does that? <laughs> you, get, you get a chance to see all of these haymakers. Oh my options. god, and, and just looks for a fucking, like, run in with up smash, SPT, really swinging for the fences. Like, they're both going to pick these options that seem radical, but in the context of their own play, like, it makes all the sense because, like, all right, they know that they both know that they have brain cells to get operating, but they have to play off of instincts, and that's why they're going to be swinging so much. Yeah. But both swinging harder, both swinging faster, and both taking game one. In a three minute slobber knocker, yeah, both. Uh, oh, Bo, Jesus. <laughs> no, Bo. it's spelt Bo, so I'm going to say Bo because he doesn't write the full name. How do you spell bow? Well, that's a good point. Um, bow? Like, like, take a bow. Yeah, it's spelled the same way, but yeah, so is Bo. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, but am I pronouncing the word Bo wrong? No, but that's not his name, though. Checkmate stream tech. No, but it's not his name. <laughs> Interesting. Excuse uh, me? <laughs> we got some debates. Let's take it to Twitch Excuse chat me? to see what they Big think. Delicious heart. Excuse Press me? 1 in the chat if you think it's pronounced Bo. <laughs> Press 2 in the chat if you think it's pronounced Bo. Hey, I can just use his real name. I can cheat. I can just call him John for the rest of the time. I can say oh, just my, John and Morty. There's too many Johns, oh, dude. There's too many Johns. New York has it. far too many Johns. Johns. Ton of Johns. <laughs> Either way, taking it right back. Yeah, good conversion off the bat, and you can see that SPT. He's swinging. He's he swinging is. hard. Well, he knows that he can get a lot off of a hit with Fox, and Fox carries a hit very well in this game. The fact that he's able to very swiftly reset situations and turn them into his favor, it works well if he's going to be pressing a lot of buttons. It feels like a lot of these down airs and these, these back airs that SPT is, is doing are kind of trying to read an aggressive jump in from Bo. And Bo is just not fighting, ever. He's just staying in place, kind of waiting for SPT to do his thing and then just punish him. 
However, what about does manage to take the lead? He does, like, the one hits that he does get in for every several that SBT gets, he's making them matter. Like, look at this. Even though we've seen SBT fairly in control of this game, too, especially as he manages to take that first yeah, stop. Wow. Like, about to not fall behind at all in this, the uh, percentage race. Like, no, being at 109, certainly. that's pretty uh, dangerous for Fox. Yeah, I mean, that that basically is dead in this matchup. Oh, wow. Yo, single hit up there. Up air a... back air. What the hell? All right, that was cute. All right, it's, it's going to be a lot of Fox and I love it. SCT has such a great awareness of when they can really just sneak one laser into an interaction and just get a little more damage. And I really like that attention to detail uh, that SCT is really taking all the damage they can get because if they can close out this stock for Bo uh, in, in relatively short order, that would be really great for them in terms of taking the second game. I like the space that SPT is trying to occupy. He's like trying to force him out of his hit. And yeah. like, it's good in, a, in concept, but the execution is leaving him just like still within Nair range, still within Blaster range. He's keeping the lead, but like, that doesn't have to look too hard to try and bring back the deficit. Percentage wise, this still isn't too daunting a task, especially with these Nairs to use to break away from any of SPT's pressure. Look at this, a couple of interactions, all of a sudden, Fox is right back on Death's door. Yeah, no, it really does seem that way, that um, I, I think that, like, SPT, and this is maybe just a factor of the two of them playing against each other so often, that SPT definitely kind of seems to have an awareness of what he needs to do, but I feel like Bo is kind of already there. Like, he's already seen SPT make these adaptations before and already knows where to go from there to punish those. Uh, so even though I think SPT is making a lot of the right decisions, it feels like Bo already really knows where uh, he has to go from there. And so those adaptations aren't really paying the dividends that SPT would want them to pay. Uh, but just as I say that, a healthy lead on the stock reads the uh, jump over him with up air. And we'll see what Bo can do to get out of this corner, because that's something that's very difficult for Wolf. Uh, but it looks like instead of really getting out of the corner, uh, SPT will actually just back up and give Bo stage control, which is uh, a dangerous game to play against Wolf. Like, Fox can play a more passive game by taking full stage, use some lasers, bait in an approach, and then whiff punish accordingly. But I feel like even though that fits to the typical Fox play that we see at the higher level, I feel like it doesn't fit to SPT, who's much better at being just shy of punish range, being able to whiff punish as need be, but still threaten to suffocate his opponents. Wow, and that's just the, the classic, the day one, and that's going to be game two. Going to Fox McCloud. Okay, so let's um, see where game three takes us immediately. Yeah. Lila and FD off the board. We're gonna yeah, it's kind of messed up that they ban Lila, I think. You know, even though it is a Star Fox stage, I don't think the Spaceys do well. No, I don't think they do at all, actually. Uh, it feels very annoying, especially for Fox to get, like, Nair up smash with, like, those uh, slopes kind of being in the mix, and I don't think those platforms really favor the Spaceys very much. Yeah, no, it's definitely a scurry stage. Kind of ironic given, you know, the franchise relation. But yeah. I digress. Everyone will have Stadium. Yeah, except, like, no, the and I mean, do you know that it's a set between two homies if every game is on Stadium? Like, that is a classic. Uh, and Plus, like, it favors both these characters so well. Like, Fox wants a lot of space to be able to dash attack in there, and Wolf wants to be able to cover a lot of space. Like, that's how it goes. Yeah, and I mean, it'll be a very thrilling game three. And afterwards, don't touch that dial, because up next we have Blackbird and Sigma, Dre, Charles. Ooh, and Pool Dre B1 actually came out to event for once. Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing. is like an Arcadian really gets these people out of the woodwork that you never really expect to see. Uh, just like how SPT probably didn't expect to see that back air, uh, catching him off the ledge with the ledge jump, and that's going to be a solid lead that Bo takes at the beginning of this first game. Yeah, that was actually a really clean interaction. Yeah, and the fact really that, like... Like, I was doing such a good job of trying to force SBT out of, like, a comfortable space. Like, committing hard to moving in onto the wolf territory. It's working out well for him. Especially now that they're playing a lot more of the cat and mouse game. Up with dash attacks, but no up air to continue yeah. the chain instead. And it feels like uh, SBT, now that uh, Bo has a lead, is kind of finding it difficult to get really a clean approach that he really wants here, right? It, it's difficult. Uh, it seems like he's playing very aggressively, but wow, great spacing, outranging that dash attack and getting the up smash to punish. Two juggles. Yeah. 
Good damage. Not the best of options given the uh, the fact that you can't do much else out of it. But like I said earlier, Fox is so accustomed to being able to take like a like a two to three piece, get some damage in, run away and reset. I think it works really well. And particularly in early presents for Fox, you're okay taking those little combos because what's really important is just that you get your opponent to the percent where most of your moves start to knock down. Because that's really when Fox is able to run away. And man just actually catch the ledge hop with a back air again, but good DI. And just uh, less percent on SPT means that he's not going to die as easily as he did the first shot. I'm always amazed when Firefox works in situations like that in this game. Uh, it's much more lenient uh, with how it interacts with walls as it was in the previous oh, game. Oh. Unteckable, actually, the fire. Oh, rate. that's so unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> Even SPT looking kind of tight with that one. But a really good call from Ball. I like how he tried to occupy all that space with Nair. Force uh, misangling from SPT. And interesting, just driving him off the stage. Catches again that jump from ledge with a forward air this time, but SPT able to bring it back. And SPT, this set, I think, uh, Bowes had a really good read on what he's going to do off the ledge, what he's going to try and do to escape. And we'll see if he has that same read. I think he was trying to read spot dodge off the ledge, actually, but didn't bite. You know, right now it's looking like like Bauhaus is pretty clean as far as like ending out the set. But we've seen as far as percentages go that SBT does not struggle to even things up. Look at that. By the time I finish the sense, we already have practically dead even percentages. Yeah, pretty amazing. <laughs> and all that stage control that Bauhaus like fought out the first two stocks doesn't mean anything because SBT oh. is breathing down his throat and he manages to get the kill. Even there, a little pop off. Shake of the hands. I know Morty's happy about that because he said he was going to go hard in the paint for today's bracket. And he's at least proven it, being yeah, able seriously. to take out his own boys. What an absolute slobber knocker of a match. That was a fun one. Yeah.